Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video I'm going to show you guys some stuff that I got in on consignment, some stuff that I bought, and we're actually going to open up some of those base set 2 booster packs. I had several that were bought that were shipped, but there were some that um, are going to be opened up on the channel. Before I get into everything, thank you guys so much for the support that you uh, put in for the, my last video. Um, if your comment's not displaying, it may be because it was flagged. There were, there were some uh, vulgar comments, and uh, even though I know you were in support of me, I, I still try to keep that off as much as I can. So if you do have something to say, just try to uh, keep it clean, and you know it should come out there and be posted. But anyways, um, ironically enough, I had a guy from there. He gave me a call shortly afterwards. He said he was personally looking into it now, so I don't know if you guys made a difference or not. Um, I thought that's what the last three months were you know them looking into it but he's going to be now pulling the footage himself so we'll see if there's anything new that comes from it but you know if not I've, I've already let you guys know what's going on and you know I'll give you another update once I, once I hear back from him he's uh, I think he said he's the VP of customer experience I think that's what he said he was but um, I, I might have that title a little off but anyways we'll jump into the video uh, first thing I'm going to show you guys is uh, it's actually MetaZoo. I got this in from D-Brews. I think this is where I bought a t-shirt and it's possible that there's something seated inside, like a pack or something like that. But um, I kind of like the box. I don't even know if I want to open it up and wear the t-shirt. I mean, it looks really cool. Very good use of colors on the box. Got a nice little seal there and there, so I can't really peek in there. Well, I guess maybe you could technically peek in there and see what's going on, but I can't tell. Okay, so maybe I can tell which shirt I have by that. It looks like a, a guy with a red hat or something. But anyways, I think I'm going to keep it, uh, well, relatively sealed. I mean, you can look inside, but I like the... I just like the artwork. It's really cool, so I'm gonna set that off to the side. Um, next up, I got in some stuff for consignment. These these are all for C13 again. That would be the thing in the title, but you should just be able to look it up. The easiest way I try to put the last three numbers of a certain number in the title, as long as it's you know not super unique and doesn't need a a lot of a, of letters in the title. But got a base set too, Raichu artwork, got a Mewtwo artwork, and a Gyarados. All of these are graded PSA 10. I really do dig the new style case. Um, even though, you know, we're on bad, bad terms with those four packs I've sent out, I really like the new uh, style case that they have. In fact, before that last video, I just sent off 71 uh, of those old style cases to be recased. And um, uh, I got confirmation yesterday or the day before that they've been received. So hopefully those get recased just fine. I've actually got a lot more PSA packs still there being graded. And I believe I know I've got one submission about 88 of them or so. So we'll just see how that turns out when they come back. These uh, I've I've really been watching. You know the the prices on some of these nines and tens in the PSA graded pack. I mean uh, they've been going for similar to you know just like the the raw ungraded pack price, which to me I still think is an opportunity just because. The case itself is nice. It protects the cards. You know, whatever you think about, you know, PSA or BBCE or whatever, as long as you know that the packs you sent in were legit and then they encased them nicely like this. I mean, this is a very cool display, I think, and it's a way to keep up with what it is. And for my OCD, I like seeing that Gem Mint 10 part. Uh, next up for consignment, or actually, we'll save that for the last part before we open up packs. Um, I bought these two items here. We've got a PSA 10 Charizard. This is the E6. This is a black tops version. As far as I know, there are both blue and black. I haven't seen a green and red version out there. Maybe there are. I really don't know. I haven't seen that myself. And I ha there is a foil and a rainbow foil. So there's, you've got, you know, the for both blue and black, you've got non-hollow foil and rainbow foil. And actually, I just picked up on one on eBay where I saw it was a black logo foil but it was smooth finished. The black foil is supposed to have like these little dots on it like kind of like a texture type deal. So once that comes in I'm going to give it a little bit I'm going to give it a look over. Maybe it's one of those like UK prints or something like that but it didn't look like it had any type of um, altered licensing or anything like that. Uh, next up I got this Alkazam. It's a PSA or not PSA. It's a CGC 6 and 
Overall, the condition isn't too bad. You can tell most of it was on the centering. Um, backside looks fairly clean, but I got it for like $227 after shipping, so I thought that was a good price, and I'll just sit it back with a lot of my other first edition uh, PS, or PSA, CGC, and BGS, you know, graded first edition hollows. I'm really buying the card, but I like the fact that it's graded and it's already been encased. And then last but not least, um, these right here I got from old school Pokemon a while back and the reason I have them out is because I've got, I have in on consignment a first edition Charizard blister pack. And now this blister pack, but I really like this case too. I don't know who makes it. I think Pokey Dreamer, the guy back there, he makes the case for these. I don't, this doesn't look like his work, but it, I mean, he might have one to see better, who knows. So, uh, the story behind this one is it was opened fresh from a sealed case by the Pokeju, and the guy, he bought it, and so that was that was the story that he has. Now, I don't know much other than that, and um, the reason I have these other two out is because I, I like, kind of like to compare seals. I like to look for different tampering um, areas that you could have on it, and, you know, the the blister itself, you know, right off, you know, my instinct is saying that it's fine. It looks great. And the material, the color of the fade, all of this looks correct. Now, I'm going to show you guys a few things that I look for. I'm not going to show you everything um, that I'm going to check for, but I'm going to show you a few things that I do check for and um, see why they check out. Now, these two right here, I believe uh, Old School Pokemon said he got these from Pokerev, and I have a few myself as well. I also got from Pokerev back when he opened up his case, and I'm going to show you some of the consistencies that these have with these, and both of these, you know, all of these, I believe, came from cases, but from different sources, and um, so a lot of people say you can weigh these. However, for me, I've had bad luck trying to weigh blister packs from uh, blister cases, like from seal case, like even straight from seal cases. So I don't think that that's really too possible. But you know, I'm sure there's somebody out there who knows how to do it. But uh, for the most part, if it's in a blister backing, which means it has like this cardboard and it has the plastic, usually that's a good sign that uh, it's it's probably going to be unweighed. It's got a very low chance um, compared to a regular booster pack to have been weighed out. Very few people have uh, still blister cases in the first place. And on top of the fact that, you know, the blister packs, you know, they're rare. And the cases that you would need to weigh it against one another is even more rare. So to me, that's always a good sign. And um, what you normally want to check for is the seal around this part here. The glue on this has a tendency to pop off, especially with um, Jungle, Fossil, and Neo were, were really bad for it. But <clears throat> almost every time I've ever seen it, the, the seals, when they popped off right here, um, you could tell by just kind of moving the corners. And when you did, you would actually see, you know, where they were, they were kind of popping off of the cardboard. And almost any time it did that, um, you would see parts of the cardboard were, would actually come up with the plastic. And you'd see like little white um, edges and stuff. And you can see with these, you don't have it. And when we're looking at this one, which it honestly, it looks like it's case fresh. There's no bends on the cardboard. There's no wear around the edges. And that's really common for single blisters that you get. Uh, it's very uh, rare that you find them super minty like this. The only place of damage that I've even seen is kind of up here. And that could have been from really anything. So it's small and almost dead center, if you can see it. But as we're examining the seal, you know, it looks very tight. Nothing's popping off. There's no sign of the plastic ever separating from the cardboard. Because, like, if we pop this off now and, you know, somebody tried to replicate the cardboard or something like that, when you put it back on there, um, it, it should show signs of tampering unless somehow somebody replicated both the cardboard and the plastic and then also the pack inside, which is very uh, unlikely. In fact, I've seen... I don't know if I've seen uh, fake blister packs that look good. I think most of the time when people try to replicate stuff, they go for the easier target, which would just be the actual individual pack. Now, looking at the pack on the inside, the seals look great. You can tell. Like I've had people say, well, look at that. It looks like the pack is splitting. Well, technically, that should be there. In fact, if that's not there, uh, it should be a red flag because if you look at the crimp, the crimp does not go all the way to the edge. 
the crimp only goes to that part. So if you didn't see some sort of separation in these, you know, right along the edge of the pack, then that would actually be indicative of somebody trying to put glue in there or something else, trying to, trying to reseal it. Because there, it should only be sealed right there where that crimp is. So if you had the pack out, you should be able to split that right there until it gets to the crimp and then it should still have a strong seal. And it's the same way on the top. You can see a little bit of splitting, you know, on the edge, on the sides. The sides is normally where you see it the most prevalent. Sometimes you can see a little bit in here. Uh, another thing that I wanted to check was the actual type of glue that was used in case everything was replicated. You know, there's a similar process usually when it's being applied. Of course, it could be different, but if it's the same, it's just another way to check. Like, there's still no way to completely authenticate anything that you have. But for me, if I'm going to sell it, I want to I want to do as much research that I can. You know, on a high-end item like this, even if it just means taking five, ten minutes and comparing different angles, looking at it in different light. Now, if you look at the ones I got from Old School Pokemon. You can see right here, it's almost like a, a checkered pattern where the glue is, where the glue was applied. I'm trying to show that to you. You can see it along here. I don't know how well you guys can see it on camera. In person, if you flash stuff in light, you should know that it's a lot easier to see. And you can see it. In fact, it goes over the edge in some spots. I'm trying to get the light on it. You can see it like right here. It actually extends a little bit beyond the border. Now, when we're looking at this Charizard artwork, we see the exact same thing. So we had the same type of thing applied to the to the plastic when it was adhesed to the cardboard itself. So for me, this is uh, I'm I'm very confident in that it's authentic, that it's fine, that it can be sold, and so that I, I do plan to put it up in my store. And once I put it up in my store, I take full responsibility over the consignment once it sells and somebody pays. And I have no problem with that. I think this is actually a really really nice example that should belong in someone's collection somewhere. Uh, I'm very tempted to buy it myself, but it's going on consignment. It's you know one of those items that you know sometimes I just have to pull back my eyes a little bit, bit and just be like nope I'm not gonna buy it I'm gonna let somebody else go for it. Um, I have made offers to consignees for certain items before, but for the most part I try not to do that. I do have some packs myself. In fact, I have another three packs that I got from Pokey Rev separately that I bought uh, directly from, and everything seems to be uh, in line with one another. So. Thank you for that consignment. This one should be CS3, but you know, just look up first edition base set pack. It should be one of the few things that come up. Now, as we're going into the next part of the video, we are going to be opening up three base set two unweighed booster packs. So hopefully that means we're gonna pull at least one hollow. Here are the three people that we have right here. Good old Jimmy, remember him? He bought four packs, four packs individually, not all at once. All four times he bought unweighed booster packs and he did not get a hollow. He went four straight with non hollows. And then we had a couple consignees actually, um, I think it might have just been, well, it was two different consignees offered to give him packs. But um, I know one of them was uh, Bespoke Pokemon, and then the other one is a guy who consigns with me a lot. And I don't want to reveal his name. But um, yeah, and he, I think he ended up pulling, it was ended up being Team Rocket packs, I believe, Japanese, so he was guaranteed a hollow, so he finally got him one. But we're going to open up his pack first, and then we'll go with, I think Austin was the last one to buy, and then we'll go with Psychotic D, Mr. Nick, and then we've got Austin R. All right, so for those of you who have been looking to buy from certain um, countries, I apologize if it's not available, um, Jimmy... You're in the Netherlands. I had to go with a UPS shipping. I believe they're still shut down for first class and priority, which means you've got a lot more expensive shipping coming your way. It's still $45, and it's going to get there a lot quicker, hopefully. All right, here we go. So this is Jimmy's pack. Let's see if we can change his luck. This is technically like his fifth pack, I believe, that he's bought, and uh, all have been unweighed. He's bought them individually. He went 0 for 4 on the first four, and then uh, we had some people be very generous and give him some packs. Or, yeah, gave him some packs, and he got some hollows. All right, so we have Do Doduo, Staryu, Sandshrew, Poliwag. There's Kakuna, the first uncommon. Got Firo and Haunter. All right, so we should have that back card now as the rare. Energy, energy, and... Ooh, item finder. I've been there, man, with the item finders and the Pokemon breeders. The trainer is usually not the one that you want to pick. So, I've got this band-aid on. It makes my thumb really smooth. I can't... <laughs> Let's see if I can get it. There we go. Use the other finger. Index and middle. So, I'm sorry, Jimmy. 
Looks like uh, we did not get the hollow that you were looking for in this one. Yeah, I know he said, pull me the big three. <laughs> one, of the big, one of the big three, and um, we did not get that. All right, so we'll go next with the Psychotic D. He got the Gyarados artwork. We did have a few that ship sealed, and I believe I actually still have a few left on the website. I think Nick or well, some, one person who bought it who used the Charizard level discount, so they got $25 off. All right, so you're actually going to start off with the first Pokemon ever. Pokedex number one, Bulbasaur, one of my favorite. You have Jigglypuff, Switch, Spearow. There's a Rhydon, Super Potion, Butterfree. Nice, you got two good non hollows You got a Butterfree and the Bulbasaur, Caterpie. Energy, energy, and... Oh, you got a nine tails. Very nice. So you got one of the hollows. Can't tell. If, let me. I'm trying to get this thing in the sleeve. I guess I could hold it with my left and twist it with my right. Man, I see why Watsy switched over to this type foil. It's really cool. I thought there was a swirl right there, but I think I was just getting it mixed up with the flame. Backside. Here we go. We haven't done this in a while, have we, guys? Got a little white nick, I think, in the top left. Very small. Bottom edge doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks like whitening right there, but I think that's actually on the other surface of the card, like the actual bottom surface. But overall, that's, uh, that's, that's a pretty clean card. Base set 2 has some pretty low pops. One, because it was very unpopular, and it did not get as many cards graded for the longest time. It was one of those things where it's like nobody cared. They'd rather have original base. I mean, everything was cheap, so why wouldn't you, you know, just go for the original stuff? And then, um, you know, it just never. It wasn't graded at the same kind of rate as a regular base set was. And you know, as things got tougher and cars got older, you know, just naturally they were more damaged. You know, the pop is, you know, just stayed that much lower because it's still that much less popular than base set. It's also not as printed, and then. Of course, it's different now. You know, the grading system is a little bit harder when you're not grading, you know, pack cards straight out of, you know, fresh cases versus, you know, stuff that's been in binders potentially for 20 plus years. All right, so here's the last pack for Mr. Austin R. Looks like he has the Pidgeot artwork. Can we get one of the big three starter evolution cards? Oh, for those of you who are wondering, uh, several sets that I've requested also got pushed through overnight. I thought that was a, a good timing, I guess. But they so they pushed through the Fossil 1999-2000, and they pushed through the base set 1999-2000. However, when I went through and I was checking which cards I had in the registry, um, they had 102 cards in the base set 1999-2000, but they had Pikachu Red Cheeks and Yellow Cheeks listed in there. But they and they also didn't have my champ. So what they ended up doing was at number seven was uh, you got Gyarados, Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan was number seven. Number eight in the set is actually my champ. But they listed Magneton as number eight, and so they actually shifted all all of the cards from number eight through fifty seven up because they put Pikachu Red Cheeks as the fifty seven I think, and then Yellow Cheeks as the fifty eight, and so. I don't know what they were thinking when they were doing that, but they got all the numbers wrong for over half the set. So what they need to do is they need to go back and put the Machamp in there as the number eight for the set, and then shift down number nine through 57, or nine through 56, down one spot and take out the Pikachu Red Cheeks, because Red Cheeks was only the shadowless print run for both Unlimited and First Edition. Sorry, that was a little little ramble. I've already sent them information on it, but I was surprised that you know it's taken them like six months to get this set in there, and then like I don't know who would list the another Pikachu like a Pikachu Red Cheeks in the base 1999-2000, and then give it a, another a different number. Like where would you even find that information? That that doesn't make any sense to me. And I get kind of why they wouldn't put Machamp in there because it's a first edition, but by now they should know that it's in the set. All right, so. This set's kind of tuned up to be like the last one. You had the Butterfree in the Bulbasaur. This one actually has Bulbasaur and War Turtle. I, I do prefer the War Turtle over the Butterfree. I realize there's probably a lot of Butterfree fans out there. Cubone, another card that people really liked when it came out in Jungle. Looks like that Lightning Energy has a line on it. Is that how all Lightning Energies are? Looks a little bit uh, more pronounced than I remember. See how that is across the top? That just deep yellow. Has it always been like that? 
Let's see, maybe we can go back and check some of the other energies. All right, here we go. Last card. Ooh, I like the buzz. So it looks like we only got one hollow, which is, I mean, that's what you should get. One out of three packs. You get, and that was the nine tails. But we got an item finder, and then we finish off with the Electabuzz. So thanks guys for letting us open up your packs here on the channel. I will have them out in the mail very soon to you. And if you guys are still interested, I believe we have three packs left. We got a Gyarados Mewtwo and a Raichu artwork. Thanks.